here. Can I tell you a really strange thing? The last time I gave a speech to actual humans in person was for Bernie Sanders in Texas. <laughs> um, right before Super Tuesday. It has been that long. Um, I've given a lot of Zoom speeches, don't get me wrong, but I am so happy that we get to actually be here physically, in person, in this beautiful place, and I am so honored to be here on the unceded territories of the Squamish people. I come from to you from Whale Kwai on the Sunshine Coast, also known as Half Moon Bay, the unceded territories of the Shishak Nation. Um, I know that your community, like mine, is one that doesn't take the natural world for granted. I know that so many of you choose to live here in part because you want to be cradled by mountains and ocean, to be able to take solace from giant cedars and giant firs, to know that at this time of year, the spring salmon and the coho are swimming up our streams, I saw them, they're back. <laughs> they're making their way up to lay their eggs and fertilize their eggs and then donate their bodies to feed our forests and oceans. The eagles over here, the wolves over here, the orcas over here, and the stellar sea lions and the harbor seals. And who doesn't like a salmon? I mean, everyone seems to agree. So what a blessing it is to live here and what a fearsome responsibility it is as well because it means that it is our sacred duty to defend all of this, all of this life. Because what we know, and it is hard to face, is that all of this is very tangibly on the line right now. I don't think we've ever felt it more. The snow and ice on top of those mountains, as Mike said, that so many of you love to climb and ski, it's on the line. And those trees that we love to visit, so many of them are not safe from logging or from wildfires. And the spring salmon, yep, they're back. I saw them this year, but I'm worried about the ones that were in embryonic form when the heat dome hit in June. What about them? What about the fries that, this, that the stream keepers here had to rescue from their dry beds during this drought? Are they gonna come back next year and the year after? And what of the web of life that they all feed? Everything is on the line. When I was in the Bernie Sanders campaign, I did a lot of events with a wonderful, incredible powerhouse named Nina Turner. And she would always say, all that we love is on the line, no more, no less. That is what it means to be alive in 2021. So we've heard a lot about climate change, climate change plans tonight. I don't know um, how many pages the, I, I didn't know how many pages the, the liberal plan was, but I did read it. But what I wanna tell you is this, after six years of liberal in power, it's really not about the plan. It's about the record. It's about the years that we lost fighting pipelines that should never have been built. And that leading climate scientists like James Hansen, the godfather of modern climate science, who testified on Capitol Hill in 1988 when Justin Trudeau was too young to vote because he was 17 years old and said that he now knew with a 99% degree of certainty that humans were warming the planet. That was 1988. That James Hansen said more than 10 years ago that any pipeline from the tar sands was a fuse to the largest climate bomb on earth. That's why I got arrested 10 years ago fighting the Keystone XL pipeline. Okay, so I don't care what neoliberal Mark climate economist is blessing this plan. This liberal government has flown in the face of climate science and they have flown in the face of climate justice because let me tell you, these pipelines that they're expanding and building and ramming through are on unceded indigenous land. And I wanna send a shout out to Kenan Who's Manual and the Tiny House Warriors who are being harassed on their territory as we speak. And I want to send a shout out to some friends of mine who are up some trees in Burnaby 
right now who may be facing extraction because of that pipeline that Justin Trudeau bought with our money. Don't talk to me about climate scientists blessing your plan. This is blasphemy. This is criminal. I am, it seems, suddenly a political wife, as you may have heard. But I'm a bad political wife because I'm angry. I am angry about all the time that we have lost. I am angry because all of this was foretold. Justin Trudeau is telling us now he's serious. He really, really means it this time. <laughs> Justin Trudeau put his hand on his heart in Paris in, in 2015. I was there. He said, Canada is back. And his environment minister looked in the eyes of the leaders of Pacific Island nations who were chanting 1.5 to survive to try to get the 1.5 degree temperature target in the Paris Climate Accord. And Trudeau and she, they said, we'll do it. We'll get it into the agreement. Canada will be the one G7 country that stands up for those Pacific Island nations. And every year since our emissions have gone up or been stable. It's one more broken treaty for this government and for Canada's brutal co colonial history. So now they tell us that they really get it. And there are a lot of plans, and it's important to assess the plans and read the plans, but I wanna tell you something that I know from having been part of the climate justice movement for a long time and having researched who we are up against and what is actually standing in our way. And I, many of you know I've spent a lot of time in the climate change denial movement. I've infiltrated their conferences along with Avi to make this changes everything. Here's what matters more than talk. Are you willing to stand up to the rich and powerful polluters and stand up for vulnerable people and for the planet that we call home? Will you stand up to power or will you try to cozy up to them and sell us some win-win nonsense with the oil and gas and coal companies? That is the question we all have to ask ourselves. We need leaders with a track record of standing up to to power in the corporate world and in the political world. That's what we have to look for. And that's what we need to rally around. We need true climate champions in Ottawa. And I wanna tell you that Avi and I were both really changed by being part of this incredible moment in the US. We've been living in the US for three weeks, three years and, and, then, and then just moved back to Canada. And we got to work with Bernie and we got to work with AOC um, and got to see the power of the squad. You know, a few insurgent, badass activists who just decided to do it and push their parties with that real insurgent energy. And we've got some folks like that already in Ottawa. We've got Matthew Green, we've got Leah Gazan, we've got others, and we've got more who want to join them in a really radical climate caucus. We've got Paul Taylor in Toronto. We've got Anjali Alpadurai in, in Vancouver, Granville. She is just a powerhouse of a climate leader. She, you know, I, I, I opened this Changes Everything with a speech that Anjali gave when she was 21 years old at the UN Climate Conference when she opened up and she said, you have been negotiating all my life. And in that time, emissions have gone up and up. We need to send Anjali to Ottawa. And we are fortunate because in this writing, we have a climate champion who, as Avi said, if we organize together, if we put partisanship aside, we can send him to Ottawa. He's 54 years old. You actually think he's gonna suddenly change his mind and start pushing LNG? You think I would let him do that? We must win, my friends. We have a chance. It is difficult. It is a narrow path. But I wanna tell you, it's been really beautiful being part of this organizing during this campaign because we have been able to meet people in this beautiful riding and have a sense of the power, the latent possibility that exists here that was really just waiting to be organized. There is a pathway and we must win because it is our duty. It is our duty for all of that life and beauty that surrounds us, that feeds our bodies and that feeds our souls. I know that we can do this and I wanna thank you so much.